Now you remember my last video, the uh, roofing video, where I took Jen out for lunch, ulterior motive. Here we are. Well, good morning and welcome back. We're starting our day off in the truck on the road headed to Windsor. Uh, she has taken up crafting, uh, which is going to require me to make some items out of wood. So my miter saw decided that it did not want to work anymore. So we are about to go to Home Depot here to see what they got for a new one. And all it costed me was lunch. Now we have arrived. I'm going to leave you all in the truck. And I'll be back in a minute. We are done at Home Depot. We ended up with a 7.5 inch miter saw. That's it there. Slider. And an orbital saw. Orbital saw? No, that's an orbital sander, not a saw. Uh, I believe they were 189 why did you get a seven and a quarter and not a 10 inch? Well, I'm not building houses. I'm only doing small projects. So I felt no need to get a 10 inch. Besides, they didn't have one. Probably would have bought the seven and a quarter anyways. Seven and a half, seven and a quarter. I don't know. I probably would have bought this one anyways, only because I'm doing small projects. Again, not building houses. Use the same analogy when I bought my welder. It's a small welder, real small. Because I said I'm not building bridges. I'm only doing small projects. Got to buy what I need. You got to remember... We got a small shop, so we only got a limited amount of space, so I can only put so much in there. That's going to do it for Windsor. We are going to head home, and I think we are going to try this thing out. We have made it back home. So first up, we've got the, uh, we picked up a 5-inch orbital sander. They are much, much better than just the static square sanders. I got one of them. It doesn't do a bad job, but the orbital sander is much better. Now, we're going to get to the good one. Of course, I give you the front side. It's a seven. It's a ten amp, seven and a quarter inch sliding compound miter saw. Again, not building houses. We're doing small projects and space. Well, like I mentioned before, space is at a premium. Let's get this thing unboxed and see what we're dealing with. I'm gonna guess there's some assembly required. Parts, screws, dust bag. Handles. All right, let's get the rest of it out. And there we are. I think that's going to be the perfect size. Well, I think we are set up. We got it plugged in. The slider's pretty smooth now. You can also bolt this down, which I'm not going to do, obviously. But it sits nicely on top of my table saw. The other one I had that I got from Pop was really big. Big 10-inch. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, motor puked in that one, which is why I got this one. But it sat on top of the table saw and then hung over each side. So it was kind of a... You know, it was kind of too big for the shop. But this one here sits perfectly. Also, I ain't getting any younger. And when I went to go carry that big one around, it was heavy. This one here, it's nice and light. It probably doesn't weigh, I'm going to guess, 12 or 13 pounds. The setup was real easy. We turn it on right here. It turns on a light. A couple safety mechanisms here. If we look, we've got this tab right here. It has to be pushed over. Then you pull the trigger. So you push it over. Just like that. I think we're ready to make a cut. I got everything tightened down. Got all the accessories on. With except for two handles over there. I'm not sure where they go, but I'm going to limb. Oh, oh, those two handles, hang on. They go right here. So when you want to carry it, I guess you can just pick it up and carry it by the handle. I think we might put those on right now. We are going to start off with a piece of one by eight pine, eight feet long. That's what I just said, one by eight. You big dummy anyway this is what we got for coat hooks i think they look pretty cool i'm gonna cut myself a 24 inch piece but i think we're too wide so we're probably gonna have to rip that down to maybe six inches once we get our 24 inch piece cut we'll see where we look and then we got to evenly space these out then i think we're gonna burn that and we're gonna stain it or we're just gonna stain it not sure yet 
stick around, we're both going to find out at the same time, I guess. That cut's nice. All right, we've got a 24 inch piece cut. Now we're going to measure and space out our hooks evenly. I like that. That is smooth. Really smooth. So this coat hook here is one of the items that Jen wants to sell with her crafting. So what we're going to have to do, what I'll eventually do is probably make up a jig because right now I'm going to have to measure out all these. Make sure that all the hooks are symmetrical. The same distance from the bottom up and evenly spaced all the way along. All right, so I got the center at 12 inches. Put one at six. That's not going to work. One at four. One at nine. That's how we're going to do that. So we got our middle at 12. We're going to go over three. And then go over five. That's going to put a center at the nine, center at the four. We got our 12. We're going to go over three. That's going to put us at 15. Then we're going to go over 4. No, we're going to go over 5. And that's going to put us at 20. Are you as confused as I am yet? I'm pretty sure you are. I'll show you. So we got 12. That's our center point because it's a 24 inch board. That's over 3. That's over 5. From our 12, that's over 3, that's over 5. Equal distance on each end. Equal distance in between. With the exception of the middle, I think that's a little wider. But I think I like it that way. Alright, now I'm going to show you. I, you buy a 1x8, folks, it's really not 1. And it's really not by 8. But it kind of is what it is. You see here, this 1x8 is actually 7 and a 16th. What I'm probably going to do is rip this at 5 inches all the way across. I'm going to move these down just a little bit, but before I rip that, I'm going to mark these out as to where I want them. Otherwise, I'll be doing it all over again, which is <laughs> kind of par for the course around here, as you know. We're going to measure four inches from the top on both sides. And we're going to run us a straight line. That way we know that these are all going to be the same height. So these are all evenly spaced from the edge to here, from the edge to here. They are four inches from the top. I just drew that pencil line there so I, got, I know they're all the same height. And I've got the screws, as you see, all facing the same way. So I ended up cutting this at five and a half inches. So by the time I put that on there, we have a little bit of space right here. Now the piece left over is an inch and a half. I'm going to end up gluing that to the top here. So it gives a little bit of an edge. Is it going to look okay? I guess we're going to find out together. This is one of my least favorite things to do. But it's got to be done. All right, here's where we are with the coat rack. One clamp on there because I had a slight mishap with a crack in the back, but I did countersink all the screw holes on the back. Uh, I'm not gonna bother flipping over now to show you, but I'll show you as soon as this is dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna start a different project, which will come up on a, another video. She's just working me to the bone here. Ain't much I can do about it. Just uh, tried cutting a pretty good angle on the table saw here, and uh, well, I'm gonna go with my blades a little bit dull. All I gotta do is make two cuts. Just give me two. I'll buy you a new blade. Just give me two today. That's all. 
Although I think I tripped the breaker. Different project. Not going there, different project. All right, so rooting through the inventory, I come across some semi-transparent red mahogany. That's what we're gonna go with. Why? Because that's what I got. Uh, I say we're gonna go with, I already did it. So here it is. This is just white pine sanded down. I think it turned out pretty good. I'm not sold on this lip right here, but it is what it is. Uh, maybe the next one I make won't have that on. It'll just be a flat board. But last thing we got to do now. Well, I say the last thing. Well, it's not the last thing I got to do. But I'm going to put the hooks on it now because I want to see what it looks like. I do have to go get some Verithane to put on this. So it's got a protective coating and a nice little bit of shine to it. But let's get these hooks on and we'll see what it looks like. I don't think it looks too bad. Maybe not even put the urethane on it. What do you all think? See, in order to justify that new saw, I got to do things like this. This isn't exactly outdoor related, unless you're going to put that up on the outside of your shop, but it is what it is. If it makes you happy and I get new tools, that's what it's all about. So that's all I got for today's video. I'm going to continue working on some other projects here just so I can justify the existence of the new tools. Guys, it's just something we got to do. We'll see you all in the next one. Later.